Slaves here, Senior Pickleball Report, powered by TNC Network. Let's get it going. Today in our People of Pickleball episode, we speak with LA's favorite uncle, Julio Rivera. He is the number one pickleball coach in Los Angeles, and he is the director of pickleball at Santa Monica Pickleball Center. And he's a National Pickleball League pro from last season and lots of insight into the game as it continues to develop and evolve. We had a great conversation and we talk a little bit about the movie that I'm in, Dream Breaker, a pickleball story, because he's got some nice insights about what's going on there as well. But before we get to that, if you like this content, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out our merch page as well. We also have a newsletter and um, a bunch of discounts below. And uh, all right, I think that's all. Let's get to that conversation with uh, Julio. It's uh, it's interesting, and uh, I'd like to have a part two eventually. All right. Here we are with Julio Rivera. He is... <laughs> LA's favorite uncle and number one pickleball coach. Welcome to the Senior Pickleball Report, Julio. Thank you, Mike. It's nice to be here. Yeah, we touched base last year at NPL events, and uh, yeah. I finally finally got you on the show. I'm I'm notoriously slow getting back to people, but it, it, it all it's all good. I, I I've seen your resume before in the past, and you are pretty prolific in the game. Um, but before we get to all the amazing things you've done and you're currently doing, um, we need to figure out how you got into this game because it's obviously taking over people's lives, um, including yours in some level. So how did the wiffle ball game find you? <laughs> um, I, I think that's a great question. Uh, I love to ask that question of everybody. So yeah. um, origin story is always the best, especially with pickleball being that it's so you know, new. It's not right. new. It's not new, but it's <laughs> kind of new. So uh, I guess, you know, people call me an early adapter, but I don't think I'm an early adapter. If you start in 2018, late, you know, mid to late 2018, you're not really a, an early adapter. I, I think, uh, you know, just after, you know, the, the tournament scene started to start going, you know, start yeah. getting ramped up. I think uh, 2016 U.S. Open and Nationals, they were starting, they're already starting to, you know, become something. Uh, but I, I do take credit for being there then. And it's, yeah. uh, it, it was, it's a lot of fun because a lot, as you know, has happened you know, <laughs> in a small, in a very small uh, period of time. It's, it's kind of, it's really, really odd, you know, the world, uh, the pickle world that, that, uh, I come from. So yeah. my story is, uh, I started with two friends, uh, two pros, two current pros right now. Uh, we, he, we lived here in, in, uh, LA and, uh, we were both, all three of us are high level tennis players and we okay. used to play, uh, <laughs> weekly. We played it. We had a group of players and, uh, we rotated a bunch of play and, and it was just tennis, 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 tennis. Uh, we became really good friends and we kind of did a lot of other things together. Dinners, vacations, you know how it goes. It's yeah. community. So right. we, we built our, our small community uh, of tennis players. And while we were looking to do other things, we stumbled into paddle tennis, ah. or what people call pop tennis. Uh, it, or I think the origin is somewhere in Venice. They, they yeah, have I've seen it played on Venice beach, right? Those yeah. courts there. Yeah. Right. So it, it, uh, the origination I believe is from Venice. I could be wrong. So somebody out there fact check me. <laughs> uh, I know they play it in small, different pockets. Um, it's a, it's a caged mini tennis court. Yeah. Uh, it's so much fun. Uh, half of the mystique is being there in Venice. Uh, you're right, right next to muscle beach. That's right. There's music playing. Uh, there's all kinds of things in the air. Yes. Um, <laughs> the, it's just a, it's just a vibe. Yeah. So my friends and I, we, we you know, we became addicted to paddle. We started playing paddle after we would play uh, tennis. Right. Uh, <clears throat> one sunny day, a friend of ours uh, spoke, uh, asked uh, our friend Jesse, said, hey, Jesse, you know, you can make money playing pickleball. And then we all looked at each other like, oh, really? Uh, you know, we've always like wanted to do something, wanted to be competitive. We still are very competitive with each other. Uh, right. Paddle only offered uh, one or two tournaments a year. 
And that really wasn't doing it. At this point in 2018, there were a good handful of of tournaments. I believe there was the Lakes, uh, there was the Nationals, there was U.S. Open, uh, there was TOC. Yeah, Tournament uh, Champions, yeah. I believe there was Tommy Wong. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so they were, they were like these, these tournaments that were going on already established. And I believe yeah. like Kyle Yates, uh, Simone, uh, Ben was playing, you know, he yeah. was, uh, just playing. I think he started in 16 or 17. I'm not sure. Uh, but we already knew, we already knew about Ben. Yeah. Uh, uh I'm trying to think of the other pros that were playing. Uh, a litany of other guys, yeah, uh, yeah, Joey Farias and 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 the likes, the OGs, <laughs> the OGs, right? Yeah. Um. So uh, <clears throat> that was that time. So we we jumped into it uh, immediately because we were high level tennis players. Uh, we had some success. Uh, yeah. The game translates. Uh, you still have to learn the nuance, but it it, it generally translates. You know. Yeah. Uh, ball perception depth perception uh you know hand eye all, all of the yeah. above so you start like anyone else you you, you show up to a, a rec park we showed up to memorial park uh there were four four tennis courts that the uh, ambassador had control of three tennis courts okay. and he with a couple of other volunteers would every morning would line up with, you know, with painter's tape, uh, courts and there was temp nets and, yeah. and, uh, and lines <laughs> and there were three pickleball, uh, I'm sorry, 12 pickleball courts in total. Okay. Uh, there one tennis court next to it. I walk into the, walk into the, um, the pickleball club oh, not the club. It's just a public park. I walk into yeah. the park and it's nothing but you know, middle-aged to senior individuals, yeah. people. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's packed. I mean, packed. I've never seen a tennis court this full in my life. Yeah. I look and there's eight to 10 paddles sitting on the floor. They, they, didn't, they didn't have paddle racks then. There right. were eight to 10 paddles on the floor with people waiting to get in. Wow. And <clears throat> I didn't, I had seen pickleball a year prior out in uh, Indian Wells while yeah. I was going to a tennis event and I saw these people and, and I really kind of like, was like, what is this? And I saw the ball and I saw, and I was like, ah, oh, no way. And I kind of, you know, I just overlooked it. Yeah. And the following year I walk in and like I said, it is packed, packed, three <laughs> tennis courts. I look over to the tennis court and there's nobody there. Yeah. There's nobody there. Yeah. And I could see a tumbleweed just like, and, I, and it, to me, that, that was like huge for me because, you know, I've been coaching tennis for uh, a, a few years now and, uh, and I was wondering where tennis was going to go, yeah. you know, and I started and I can feel it slowing down myself and yeah. uh, not that tennis is dead. And I love tennis no. <laughs> and tennis, I, and I played tennis for over 40 years and I'm, I'm a solid tennis player and I will continue to play tennis. So right. I'm not shitting on tennis. Right. Uh, I'm just saying it was just something like, wow. And I'm just stating the facts. This is what I saw. This is what I see in my neighborhood. Um, I saw nobody really playing tennis. This is pre COVID. Yeah. Is that sort of an emotional eh, a little bit? Cause you've been involved in the sport for so long. Did you kind of go, was it sort of a bummer to see the courts like, you know, it's just kind of empty and things slowing down? Well, I mean, abs- you know, yes, yes and yeah. no, you know, because, you know, I, I believe things have to evolve. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, you have to just keep, you know, getting bigger and better and doing different things. Right. I also think that tennis, um, in some ways, you know, it has its format and that's it. It's, you know, it hasn't really evolved from from anything. Yeah. So, uh, you know, nowadays people, you know, are looking to be stimulated and they, you know, they want to see things yeah. moving. And so, it, you know, I, I didn't feel bad, but what I did feel is like, Holy cow, there's a whole nother world out here. Right. Uh, I, I couldn't believe it. And for me, somebody, I was like, wow, look at this. This is amazing. So I went <laughs> out to the court, I went out to the court and, um, you know, started playing and the, and they had the, the designated courts, the three O, the two, you know, just the same yeah. way in tennis, you know, you sure. do your ratings. So the ambassador who knew we were, com- who knew we were coming, he, he ushered us over to the four or five court and we started playing and, 
it, that was it. It, it, it yeah. was just like instant. You just started playing this and you're like, wow, this is pretty cool. And yeah. Uh, I remember like, this is still 2018. People weren't really driving the ball much, but you know, okay. I, that's all I knew. I'm a tennis player. I don't know anything yeah. else. So, you know, I'm trying, I'm playing that, you know, that banger, uh, pickleball, right. which everybody's playing now, by the way, <laughs> right? even the pros. Okay. Yeah. The uh, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That's a whole nother conversation we could talk about. Right. right. Um, but, uh, you, you know, I go and I drive my first ball. And I hit a winner in the back corner, you know? Yeah. And, and they were torn between like nice shot and being appalled that I actually drove the ball. <laughs> so the guy, the guy was like, we don't do that here. And I'm like, do what? You know, it works. Hit the ball over. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> you know, meanwhile, this is when like pickleball two had a lot of awkward looking uh, players. Yeah. You know, guys that held the paddles a little differently, not ping pong, but even a little bit different. And, yeah. uh, you know, the that's Rob when Cassidy it, yeah. look a little bit more, maybe. <laughs> yeah. A little Rob Cassidy, the Jeff yeah. Warnick, you know, the, yeah. you know, love Kelly Rob. He, yeah. Rob's Rob's one of my favorite lefties in the world. And he knows that. Uh, yeah. yeah but you know, the, the guys that kind of hold a paddle a little different, yeah. they play a little, um, you know, what I call awkward, but it's more yeah. like, unconventional pickle, you know, right. Just, right. you're just not used to it. I, I, coming from a tenant, you know, from a tennis yeah. background, you see, uh, you see an angle and you see someone approach the ball in, in a way that doesn't make sense, but yet it comes over. You're just like, right. what the hell, you know? Yeah. So, right. So, you know, you start to learn and, and then you, you learn that you're like, Oh, this is cool. I can be good at this. So once that yeah. happened, that was it. The, the gloves yeah. came off and you know, there was, you know, paddle started to go away. Um, you know, I still have tennis in my life, but you know, pickle, you know, pickle just kind of took over. I could tell you in all honesty, I don't even know if this is a good admission, but <laughs> I can tell you probably from, probably from 2020, you know, I hadn't taken a day off of pickle for about four years, maybe wow. three, three and a half years. Wow. I think I played pickleball, some sort of, some sort of drilling, teaching, sure. playing, yeah. competing. Um, yeah. And then I took like a, a family vacation and we took eight days and that was like groundbreaking. I didn't bring my paddle. <laughs> Good for you. You know, I, I went to Puerto Rico for eight days. I didn't bring my paddle and got a bunch of phone. I didn't even know that, you know, I didn't know people knew me on the Island Yeah, and people were inviting me to come play pickleball. And I yeah. was like, no paddle, no shoes, you yeah. know? Uh, but, uh, um, that's what it does. You know, the game would just, <laughs> you know, just kind of, you know, grabs you and it's just a lot of fun and, and it, you know, and it's not just a competition. It's like the new family that you're afforded, you know? Yeah, um, absolutely. The community. And I think everybody's always in, in search of a community and, uh, uh, pickleball kind of gives that to you. You know, everybody's just out there to have a good time. Uh, well, most, most everybody's out there to have a good yeah. time. Uh, and uh, yeah, and that was it. That, that, that started, that started that, the journey, you know, the journey right. started, I said, okay, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to be really, I want to be good. I want to be really good. I want to be the authority. I want to be one of the best. Yeah. And uh, so then I started doing the things that you do, you know, to, to become great. I mean, you know, how many, how many Kobe videos have you seen? How many Michael Jordan videos have you seen? You know, uh, it, you know, it's how many, you know, Andre Agassi, you know, stories and books you read, you know, right. it's the same thing. You got to, you know, repeat, repeat, practice, drill, it's the grind, you it's know, the grind. Get, get better, you know? Yeah. So I was very lucky, uh, to have a couple of good friends. Uh, I'll name drop Jesse Irvin, mm -hmm. uh, Scott Crandall, they're, you know, very good friends of mine. And we started together. Um, Jesse, you know, took off, you know, as she should. She's so talented. Yeah. Um, but, you know, she took off. There was, there's a great need for high level women. Yeah. So once the word was out that there's a high level woman out, then it's like vultures, you know, the vultures start circling. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, she got to start playing with Jeff Warnick. 
uh, <laughs> for a while. And so that kind of meant that we all got to, to, uh, to play with Jeff Warnick and crew. And, right. um, you know, that, that's just amazing. Uh, I, a lot of, a lot of it's documented on my, my, um, Instagram, but it's been a, a fascinating <laughs> journey. We've, you know, we met so many people, you know, Jesse and Scott, you know, went off way more than I did and just, you know, yeah. really got in entrenched in it and was, you know, very good early. Yeah. And, uh, that's what you have to do. You, you know, you've got to get in and break in early or it's really hard to get partners. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, obviously, because because the depth just keeps adding year after year, actually day yeah. after day, because people keep yeah. finding this game and yeah. whatever, if they're high level, this or that. And some people just have a knack for it. I think what's cool about your story is you are like you mentioned, you're up, you're sort of on that edge of when the pro game really started to get going. And, you know, a bunch of us COVID people came in and, and to us, that seems like in pickleball years, like the 1920s, you know, yeah. it's like, yeah. But yeah. it's like, you know, eight years ago, total. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, right? Yeah. But that's yeah. what's cool about it. And that's what I think, <clears> you know, I went to Venice Beach for the first time in 1981. And I remember watching, you know, yeah. like, with the pop tennis or whatever they're calling yeah, they, it. They, yeah. It's like pop it's, paddle now. Or something. And so it's when I got into pickleball, I yeah. thought to myself, because I, you know, it was 1981. I'm mean, just 40 years later. I was like, was that the game I was watching? And then I like looked it up, and I'm like, oh no! But it's it because it felt so similar. I'm like, the court's small. They're hitting a ball, and it was it was not tennis. And I was like, maybe that's the game I I remember. But then my wife reminded me that when she taught PE 20 years ago, she uh, she used to teach pickleball because she could get the kids to actually keep the ball in play. Yeah, instead I, of hitting it, makes it. sense. Correct over the fence, but for you, obviously, you know, this has been a whirlwind journey over the last six, seven years. I mean, now, you know, you're director of pickleball. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Like Santa Barbara pickleball center. So yeah. Talk, talk about That's like uh, Santa Monica. Yeah. Santa exactly. Monica pickleball center. That's right. Santa Monica, man. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong beach. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly. And, and, uh, and then you've, you've uh, obviously worked with some high profile people, actresses, musicians, like your life has become sort of, celebrity like in this world. I mean, you go to Puerto Rico, people know you're there. So talk about a little bit about that journey and the surrealness of like, all of a sudden I'm, you know, I'm, I'm running a facility. I'm going to be part of a facility. I'm going to own a facility. I'm going to coach these people. I'm playing pro pickleball over 50. Um, talk about some of those things. Well, that's all happening all at one time. Right. So <laughs> it's, just, it's just kind of whirlwind, you know, yeah. uh, it, it, it look, you know, life throws you things and you've got to catch them and go with them. You know, you mm -hmm. can't just say, oh, well, you know, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. I, at no. least that's the way I think, you know. Right. Um, you know, not they're not always going to be knocking on the door and there's not always opportunity. Uh, I, I saw an opportunity in pickleball um, beyond um, just rec play. I, I saw because, you know, tennis um, became my business. Mm -hmm. Um, it was the way I was earning money, you know, working with high, you know, high end clientele. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I already had a model in, in mind. Um, and I said, you know, this could be something that will bring longevity to longevity to me. Um, because, you know, as you know, tennis is very physical. Um, right. this is something else that I can do and, uh, and, and, and be successful and, you know, you know, make a business out of it. Yeah. So I, I set out to do all three. So in order to, to, to be legitimate, you know, especially in this world, you, you've got to have a resume, you've got to have receipts, yeah. right? right? So that, that means, okay, number one, I got to go out there and play. I've got to know what it is like to feel that feeling when the lights are on and everyone's mm -hmm. watching and every ball counts and every drop counts and every third and every fifth. Right. When every serve return, when everything counts and people are depending on you, how are you going to do? So this way, when somebody asks me, I can tell them I know exactly where you're coming from. And here's yeah. my bit of advice. Right. So that's the approach I took. I, I you know, I said, I, you know, I'm I set out to, to play as much as possible. I got lucky with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, the pandemic stopped. And then 
that allowed me and some friends to like literally learn the nuance of pickleball. You have to learn how to play doubles. Yeah. Uh, if you look in today's game right now, you've got a lot of tennis players and such, you know, they're trying to speed up the game and make the game faster along with the balls and the paddles. Um, but if you don't have that nuance down, you're still, you still, you're not going to get it. You're going to get a couple of rounds as you can see. Yeah. I mean, we just saw this weekend. I was just, well, I'm, I don't even know what happened today, but I, but I know who's in the finals. I know who's, you yeah. know, basically I know the way they play. Right. So you've got to learn how to play pickleball. And uh, that's the one thing that I have an advantage over a lot of people is that I've learned how to play this nuanced game. Yeah. Um, but it's not over. It's still evolving. It's still right. it's, it's still developing. You know, it, it's crazy how things are just, you know, rapidly six months ago at the beginning of the year, this game was different. Yeah, you I know? would agree. Yeah. The, at the beginning of the year, this game was different. Yeah. So, and now you see a lot of different, uh, a lot of speed ups, everything is super aggressive and, you know, I'm all for it. I think they're really trying to find out, uh, find a way to, you know, make the game really watchable to the general public. For sure. Know? For sure. Absolutely. So they got to figure out, you know, a format that's really going to work for them. Um, I'm yeah. just happy to see that there's real money into in it now. You know, there's real money behind it. There's, you know, there's real sponsors. Um, right. So that's good. So that that's phase one. So, you know, getting good, I, you know, uh, just playing tournaments. My, you know, my very first tournament, I think, was the Santa Barbara Open. Oh, okay. And I I played four or five, um, lost to Jay. Um, I lost. We lost to Gabe Joseph and oh, yeah. Scott Crandall. Um, you know, you take your beatings. You you go home. You learn. You keep drilling. Yeah. And you start playing. That was a four or five tournament. Okay. So I'm like, I got to win a four or five before I go to five zero. Yeah. So go to uh, fast forward to La, the Plaza in Las Vegas. That's where they were playing pickleball on the roof. Go to the, yeah, I remember you know, seeing shots of it. <laughs> yeah. So total blast. A lot of fun. Play that. Uh, win, win that. I'll uh, actually lose in the finals yeah. uh, of that one. Come back in the in the fall. Win that. So then that's it. I'm done with four or five. So then the next battle is okay. Let's you know start playing five O's. <laughs> so um, I pick a, I pick up uh, Natalie Bagby along the way. Oh, man, she's local bad. to me, and I yeah. told I told Natalie Bagby. I said you are going to be great. And I said, you will be good very soon. So just, you know, come on, let's go, let's train. And her and I trained, her and I teamed up. We never lost in the five O's. Um, and we played that for about a year and then we played senior pro. So, and then what happens in senior pro is, is whoever the better partner is gets the better, uh, uh, the next set of better partners. So, yeah. uh, as we can see, you know, history's uh, already uh, shown, you know, Natalie's out there still on the podium and yeah. I'm not, so, um, <laughs> you know, we played senior pro, we did okay. Uh, but you know, the, the, the top guys are like looking at her like, oh yeah, you know, I'm going to win with her, you know, yeah. and they swooped in, you know, the Ricks, the Daves, the Danes. Sure. Um, you know, they, they went in and, you know, and, and took her, you yeah. know, and, uh, even Scott, you know, took her and, 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 and got, got trophies, you know, got right. medals. Yeah. So, so, but I'm very happy to be a part of that. I'm happy to be a part of, of Beth Bellamy, you know, getting in and, and getting started and, and, you know, she was a beast from the beginning and yeah. it didn't take long. I know. I remember she played, she didn't even have a partner for, for Bobby Riggs. It was an APP in San Diego. She didn't have a partner. Rick lost his partner. Rick says, Rick picks up Beth and the rest is history. They, right. win, they don't win it. They don't lose another uh, uh, yeah. tournament that whole year, you know? Yeah. So, um, so, so that's it. So then, you know, I, I've been playing senior, senior pro, um, for a couple a few years now. Uh, I still have, I, I still have a, a family and a, and a, and a, and a wife yeah. of 26 years <laughs> and a life uh, and a life. <laughs> So, uh, you know, I, you know, the, the touring life is just not for me, but I, I still like to yeah. be competitive. I still play. Yeah. And I, I play a lot quite often. I play high level. I play with a lot of young kids. Yeah. Um, 
you know, and I'm, I'm coaching a lot of the, hopefully the future of, of pickleball. So, so that was it. So I, you know, that was the second, you know, second phase was getting good, getting competitive. And I've done that. And the third phase for me was, you know, the business side of it was Santa Monica pickleball. I live in Santa Monica. I've been here since 2006. Uh, like I said, I've been part of this community, part of the tennis community since I, so since I arrived, yeah. uh, one of my good friends and my business partner, John Nieder, uh, he started, um, he was working, he's a, um, a Duke coach. He coached tennis at Duke and he came out to, to California to, to coach a, a, a litany of high level players, some pros. Okay. And, uh, he was a head of a program out here in, in the Palisades. Uh, he and I met, you know, we were, you know, really cool with each other. I was more of a tennis player before I was teaching at the time. Yeah. And then in 2010, I went off, I, I basically had a Jerry Maguire moment and kind of quit my job. And, um, a friend of mine helped me get started teaching tennis. She said, you know, you, you're wasted talent, yeah. uh, you know, just being behind a desk and you should be out there. And I, I said, I agreed with her at that time. <laughs> and, I left. and at the same time, my buddy, John, he had splintered off and he went to start the Santa Monica tennis center, oh. uh, which was one tennis court. And he, and he set out to, you know, to be the best with one tennis court around and, and, well, 13, almost 13 years later, you know, he's, he was still out there thriving. You know, right. he, he figured out programming. He figured out the, you know, the right amount of people to be on the courts and, and how to fill the courts. And, and, and he, then he started a small retail uh, uh, part of it. So uh, 2019, 2019, I already started thinking, I started thinking about like, wow, like, I need to start getting on the move with this and, and maybe get, get going with a facility. Right. And, uh, the facility that we have now, Santa Monica pickleball was the perfect facility for me. I was like, Oh man, John, I'm like, you have the perfect facility. It's one tennis court. It can be turned into four pickleball courts. And then that's it. Yeah. It's a jewel. And, uh, this is 2019. And he's like, yeah, you know, yeah, maybe we should, you know, let's, let's talk, yeah. you know, and he's kind of, you know, tepidly following me on Instagram and he's watching the journey yeah. and, uh, and we get to close, we get to 2020 right in the beginning and we have breakfast and we always used to do check-in breakfast for years, him and I, yeah, yeah. and, uh, we just have, okay, let's check Let's see. And we were like, Hey, I think we should get down and do, and do something and partner up. Yeah. And he's like, all right, I think we should, you know? And then COVID, yeah. COVID hits, boom. Yeah. And, you know, COVID hits and shuts everything down. People just kind of ran into their corners and went into survival mode because in the, in the beginning of COVID, nobody knew, uh, you know, what was, what was happening. Right. Yeah, for sure. Nobody knew at all, you know? <laughs> so, you know, we kind of just kind of broke apart. And at that point, I'm just like, getting into like the tournaments and, you know, and I'm really involved going. in tournament. Yeah. Right. And I still have a business at home that I, you know, a private business that I have with my private clientele that I have to, you know, oversee. So <clears throat> we kind of, we didn't lose contact, but we just kind of shelved it. You know, we put it on the shelf. Uh, fast forward two years later, you know, I'm thriving. Uh, you know, now I'm they, you know, they're calling me uncle Julio. <laughs> um, and which is weird. Like you, you were asking me before, like, that's, that's, it's really weird. It's kind of, it's, it's, um, you know, it kind of felt dubious to me. Um, you know, like, why are these, you know, why are people asking to take pictures of me? I'm like, I, I'm, I'm terrible, you know, and people want to, you know, take a picture yeah. of me. People want to talk to me. People, you know, just come up to me in general, randomly, you know, Miami airport, it just, it's crazy. Yeah. So, um, it, it was kind of awkward, but it was kind of cool too, you know? Yeah. And, um, it was fun. It was fun to see like my kids or my daughter roll her eyes for the first person just <laughs> randomly, you know, but then like after it happened a few times, she was like, holy cow, this, is, hey. you know, she, she put a little respect on me then after That's that, right. you know? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, you know, 2022, John and I, you know, start talking and, and he's like, man, I don't know, pick a ball. He's like, yeah, it looks, you know, it looks really good. Like, he's like, you really believe in it? And I, and I sent him, I said to him, I said, 
come to Memorial, which is the the local park at Santa Monica, okay. which like I said, it's a hundred to 200 people in, in a day easily, yeah. you know, in the morning. Right. Um, I'm like, just come find me. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm over there and at Memorial and I'm just doing a, you know, I call it community service. You know, I'm just playing yeah. some rec games Yeah. and I'm like, just find me. And he walks into the gate. There's only one way in one way out. He walks in. I see him. He, he, he can't find me. I let him sit there for about 10 minutes. He cannot find me. There's so many people there. Yeah. So I walk, I run up to him and I'm like, yo, pick your mouth up off the ground. And he's like, are you serious? He's like, this doesn't translate on, on the, on the, on the videos. Cause you know, I post almost all, all the time. Right. I'm like, here right. it is yeah. another day at Memorial here. We, this is what we're doing. Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, it just doesn't translate until you come and see it. And then I said, are we going to do something? And I said, are we going to do something or what? And he said, yeah. we're going to do something. He's like, we're in. <laughs> so, um, you know, just, just when that happened, the uh, retail spot next door had just opened up. They had moved out and he's like, I want to go big with retail, you know? And I said, yeah. I think you should. He's like, there's nobody that's doing it. Uh, you know, everything, you know, things are, things are, flying, you know, he yeah. started to, you know, he started to buy a couple of paddles in the tennis shop and that, that was working. So he's like, I have a vision. I want to just blow this thing open. And I said, all right, we just have to make this thing like a big wall and make, make sure people just, every time they walk in, they just go, wow. Yeah. You know? and, a wall of uh, paddles. A wall of paddles, man. And and that's what we have, man. We have the wow factor, man. I, I, I'm leaving in an hour to go over there. I, I'd show you, but I yeah. could always send you some photos. Yeah, um, we can put them you could in always, here. Yeah, you could always follow Coach Julio or Santa Monica Pickleball. That's right. And, um, but we have a wow. We have every freaking paddle that you can think of. I mean, there's a, there's a few outliers that we don't carry. Yeah. And uh, we're anchored by some of the big brands, yeah. um, you know, that are out there. And, uh, you know, we're... We like I said, we just wowed the whole community. Yeah. So people come from far and near. I've had, we have people from all over the world that come in specifically uh, to see the shop, to see the courts. Uh, we, you know, we started with a, a combination of tennis and pickleball. You know, because we, we just couldn't throw people out in the street, and <laughs> we needed to figure out like programming and see how things were going to work. Yeah, yeah. So we started working around the tennis because we, you know, John already had proven tennis. Yep. going. And, uh, you know, listen, the handwriting was on the wall. I told him, I said, it's not four X, it's more like 10 X, you know? Yeah. And, um, he's like, I hear you. And, and I'm telling you, man, we, we opened up, we opened up, we were selling, this is when the, uh, the, uh, the, um, Invicta pro was, was just oh, yeah. came out. Tyson was, was, you know, just had the Mohawk and right. he, you know, he was, he was really on top of it right then. And people were coming in and buying four of them at a clip. Wow. You know? So uh, we put a little mini court inside the, inside the shop. So we have a dink court. Um, so, you know, like, look, you, you, you need to feel things. You yeah. need to, you know, you need to, with a paddle, paddles are a very personal thing, you yeah, know, and I, I understand, you know, I understand the online, but, yeah. uh, but you need to feel it, you know, no, so I agree. we demo every paddle, you know, every paddle you can demo. We have a, <clears throat> excuse me, we have a thriving pa uh, demo business yeah. and that comes off the price of, you know, of what you purchase. Right. And, uh, and that's it. Yeah. So, it, you know, we've, we've done very well. We're very happy, you know, with where we've come, uh, you know, fast forward, we, we no longer have tennis. It's just dedicated, beautiful pickleball courts. Just like and, Bobby Riggs uh, went all, ten, all, all pickleball. Well, absolutely. I mean, I, I remember, I saw the evolution, you know, yeah. I, I remember just Bobby Riggs having mostly tennis courts just mm -hmm. and then it was like eight pickleball courts and then 12 pickleball yeah. courts and 16. Then, right. you know, when I, I went to a tournament, there was one tennis court yeah. uh, there and then the rest was pickleball. And now they've, you know, they've turned it into a beautiful facility. Yeah, absolutely. Really nice. Yeah. So obviously, you know, there's this evolution we're in the, we're still in the very early stages of at least of what, what I would call the, the, uh, the modern version of the game. Obviously it's been around since the mid sixties, you know, and PE departments and YMCA's carried it for a very long time and kept it, you know, actually in the minds of a lot of people, because they still come across people that hadn't played the game in 25 years. Like I played this in PE and they remember this game. And now they like, Oh my God, it's huge. 
So, you know, that being said, you know, we talked before we came on the air, uh, it was a brand new pickleball documentary out called, you know, dream breaker, a pickleball story, Yeah, which, which I'm in. Um, so <laughs> I self didn't plug. even know that I, that was <laughs> so, great. So thank you. But over two years, you know, I spent sort of commenting on the pro pickleball scene and, yeah. uh, um, and you've lived it and you've met all these people and you've met the people who are at the very beginning of the pro game. And then you see the film and obviously, you know, and you've been involved with MLP as a coach with the squeeze. Um, what was going through your head? Because I know when I was watching it and I had been involved in it at a different level than you, because you lived it. I was in it where I was watching it since, you know, 2021 constantly. Yeah. And then to see it on screen, I was like, I was somewhat like, what, what is happening? Like, because, you know, there is so much money being thrown at this sport right now. There yeah. are so many players to be, th and by the yeah. way, it's not an easy story to tell. Um, it, 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 there's so many moving parts. You did a great job, man. I'm well, telling well, you, well, you are you. a storyteller, man. Thank you. you and it ended, job. you know, the, the film ended with it still yeah. going on as we yes. all know. Right. It, it right. would have probably been better as a docu-series, but you know, yeah. that's, yeah. that's another story. So talk right. about like, when you watch this film and you see this, like, what are some of your reactions? Because you know, a lot of these people, you know, probably a lot of little inside things that we all don't know. You know, the personalities a little better. Um, first of all, like, what did you think of, of, of seeing that on, on film for like the rest of the world to kind of eventually see it once it lands where it lands? Well, I could say this, like for about, I don't know, maybe about 30 to 40 people, they're really going to be like, wow, this is pretty cool in the sense, yeah. like, cause they're all in it. Yeah. But it's it's kind of like a a, a, a reunion video, you know, yeah. it's kind of just, you know, and, and then you're like, oh, my God, I forgot all about that. And I forgot all, yeah. all about her or him. Yeah. Um, so there's going to be a bunch of people going to be like, oh, my God, it's just like, you know, but um, I, I mean, I thought it was a fascinating, uh, fascinating tell. And I like yeah. I said, again, on the record, I thought you did a fantastic job and you I definitely you definitely made the movie. Um, there were def definitely some stars. Ryan Sherry was a star. Well, um, Ryan Sherry is a star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Ryan Sherry is a star. And 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 this documentary actually shows that, you know, he had his hand in in a lot of of the beginnings of of connecting. You know, he you Absolutely. know, he wasn't out there like painting lines and, you know, he, but he was out there connecting these people, you know, yeah. to make this a legit legitimate sport, you know, and right. that's where he needs his, his recognition. But, uh, I remember I was at the very first PPA in Mesa. Uh, mm, I was no. there with, uh, Gabriel Joseph mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, he was just kind of up and coming and, you know, Ben was the man, Ben was beating Kyle Yates at this point. So it was okay. like Ben. So it was first, it was Kyle and Ben, then it was, then it was Ben, then Kyle. And, uh, I remember how, how much like we were so excited to to have you know Gabe there and we were like Gabe you know Gabe you know if you have your chance against Kyle you got to take it you got to take it and yeah. he beat Kyle in three it was like the best thing and I remember watching Ben over in the corner and he was watching Gabe you know because Gabe was like yeah. the new kid that came yeah. on you know he was looking but you know, he he handled Gabe no problem yeah <laughs> it, it, it is still bad. continues <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh but uh, that that was the beginning of that, you know. Uh, Matt and Lucy were, you know, on the top. Yeah. Um, you know, um, Stone. Adam Stone was playing. You know, right. Adam Stone, who we all hear on the, you know, on the. Yeah. You know, even Dave Fleming was playing. Uh, these these people that you you listen to, they're all they were playing. So yeah. like that very first tournament was was super cool, and and like that was like the journey. And then from then on, like every time you go to a pro practice, you know it's you, you you're hearing the discussion of the business of pickleball, mm. you know, and yeah. uh, they definitely like definitely have some inside that I have to keep with me. Sure, but uh, you guys in the movie did a fantastic job of kind of chronicling like what was going on uh, yeah. when I. I love, I love, there was a few scenes I loved. I love the war room scene. I don't oh, want to yeah. ruin it for That people. was really cool. Um, you know, that was really great. And I just love the way that Ashley Underwood um, just kind of like just flipped the story back and forth. And, yeah. and the way you kind of jumped in and was telling the story was just fantastic, dude. 
I love it. And I love the yurt, yeah. man. And <laughs> we got to do well, something that, about maybe making honest, those the, courts a little nicer. And then I'll Yeah, come exactly. Out. No kidding. The world's worst pickleball course. I mean, the yurt is probably what got me the gig ultimately. I remember I took a meeting. I took a meeting with Ashley and some people yeah. and I was in the yurt and they go, are you in the yurt? And I said, yeah. And I turned my <laughs> phone around and, and I did this like, and then done. I came back and they're all like, Oh, yeah. so yeah. I think it was a contrast. I think ultimately what it was, you have these billionaires and all these celebrities talking about right. throwing money in this game. And then let's cut right. to the hippies sitting in a tent. Oh, awesome. <laughs> it's so good. Playing his bass is smoking yeah. a, you know, a pipe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was so good. It was so wholesome. And you know what? That, you know, you kind of bring uh, the roots of pickleball back because what's happening is, you know, it, it's, you know, they, it, and you'll hear it like a lot of the bloggers, they, yeah. they talk about big pickle now. Right? Do. That's they the new do. term. Exactly. Right. And, and, and it's getting like that, man. And, and yeah. I don't want to see that happen either. And I, yeah. you know, um, when I played the tournaments in the beginning, like you play, a, you play a tournament, whether pro or amateur, you yeah. would still play afterwards. You like, you go and, and slap yeah. paddles and then go find rec games to go and play, you yeah. know, and, and that doesn't happen anymore. You know, people are, you know, you know, people going off to their own corners, to their trainers, to their buses, to the, right. to whatever, to their whole hotel rooms or their separate re freaking lounges, yeah. you know, and yeah. that's kind of lost in pickle. You know, that I don't really like to see, you yeah. know, uh, I like to see like that whole community kind of thing. Yeah. And that's so, kind of what happens. I, you know, I played beach volleyball for years and yeah. in the beginning we were sitting, uh, we were, you know, we were all around championship court with our coolers and our beach chairs. Right. And then, you know, yeah. 10 years later we were sectioned off in, you know, bleacher seats 20 right. yards from the actual court. And it was just right. a different, a different thing in a different vibe. I'm a little sad that I sort of missed what you got to see a little bit, you know, in that era of, you know, 2018 and, and somewhere in there, because it would have reminded me of what was going on back when I was playing, you know, volleyball in the late eighties, early nineties. And right. it's, I love that right. vibe in that community. Right. I think what we do see a little bit of that um, is still at the senior pro level because y'all just really sort of, you got a pretty cool community, whether you're playing the senior pro tour, the APP NPL or a PPA event. If you follow Instagram or all the socials like I do, you guys are playing really high level ball. But at the end of the day, you're hanging out and you're chilling and you know each other and you're, you're having a good time. And I think that's the part I really enjoy about covering uh, at least senior pros. Dude, that was a great segue. <laughs> I'm going to steal that. We got to hang out uh, more. <laughs> definitely. Um, yeah, listen, NPL, senior senior. Pickleball. Um, there is a world and, and it exists and it's very good. And um, the thing I think about pickleball, especially with seniors and the senior pros, everyone has a body of work. Everyone yeah. has a body of work and you're right about the community. It's, it's still, it's still a tighter knit community. Uh, definitely in, in all, in all aspects, uh, you know, I know in APP, uh, I, I played Miami open, uh, in the beginning of the year. Yeah. And, um, it was, a it was one of my best tournaments. It really, really, really was. It, it really, uh, the community was really great. Ken does a great job. Yeah. Uh, you know, he takes care of the pros and you know, that was one of the things I hated about some of the, uh, I'm not even going to go into bashing people, but yeah. I don't, you know, I, I didn't like playing some of the tournaments because, um, you're taking my pro money, but I, you don't make me feel like a pro. Yeah. Um, you know, it, right. I was and I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Being treated like a professional, um, is, yeah. is a big deal. And I've, I've got to see that up close a few times which is really cool because you're right. People have a body of work, not only in pickleball, but in their lives. Yeah. They've, they've yes. been high end yes. professionals have achieved yes. amazing things. Yes. Yes. And, uh, you know, and to be treated in a way that, um, you're, you're appreciative of them to, uh, you know, obviously contribute, uh, to whatever organization that you're, you're trying to establish. So that's right. what I was enjoying. So, uh, and, and that's, you know, listen, that was the big thing with NPL and, and is, you know, unfortunately yeah. I, I just couldn't play this year. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, it just couldn't work for me. Uh, I could tell you that last year I had a fantastic time. It was the, yeah. it was, it was the best format, um, that I had played in a long time. Uh, there was so much camaraderie. Uh, there was great competition, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and I got treated like a professional. Yeah. That's and the I, biggest and, thing I think. And, and that feeling, you know, really went a long way. 
Yeah. Uh, it, it just does, you know, because you are a professional. <laughs> yes. I mean, you should rightly be treated as one because that's what <laughs> you are. <laughs> just, you know, just, yeah. Just saying, you know, yeah. so uh, kudos to, you know, Beth Bellamy, kudos to Rick and, and Michael yeah. uh, for putting the league together. You know, I support the league and uh, hopefully maybe in the future, you know, I can get back into playing. Uh, I think I'm still good enough. Uh, oh, you're good enough. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get uh, down by you so I can get good enough. <laughs> definitely. You're more than welcome to come. You know, we, you know, we have a lot of, you know, we're just lucky to be in an area where a lot of people are passing through also. Yeah. So they want to come and check it out. And, uh, you know, we're always, God, there's so many players that we, you know, that come through here right now. Most recently, Roscoe Bellamy, who's uh, oh, yeah. you know, a move, you know, he, he's, been playing with us and now he plays more out by his house out in the valley he's a beast um, yeah he's a beast um he's always been a beast i've known him since he was about eight or nine years old yeah um, I was, i've always been a big fan of his uh so when he went to ucla i was really really uh really happy for him yeah you know, and, and, and he was on the top of his game you know so uh, yeah. i really hope that it could happen for him here he's young enough and he has the talent and he has the iq and he's got yeah. the genetics. So hopefully, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll see. How do you drop does. a ball in the kitchen on a guy that's that long and athletic? It's <laughs> very hard, man. Just expect it's coming back, especially with these paddles, man. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. No Crazy. kidding. Yeah. So let's just touch on it right before we get out of here. Um, yeah. You know, we, we don't have to go super in depth because we can talk another time, which I'd like to, because there's plenty of yeah. other things for us to talk about. But obviously I, I review paddles and I've been reviewing paddles about 18 months. My channel has been around about, two and a half years, but it's changed significantly just in the last six months. Um, obviously gen three is, is controversial now, but you know, once we started going thermal form, unibody foam injection, you know, raw carbon fiber, now we're Kevlar's hot again. Um, and somebody just wove in some titanium, uh, it's still the wild West, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, yes, 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 yes. And <sighs> Again, like, listen, they're, they're trying to figure out a format that's going to translate into eyeballs. Yeah. So, you know, and balancing that line, <laughs> it's, it's a balance, you know, yeah. uh, when I, when I walk into, or I turn on the TV and I watch pickleball and I see like Ben and Colin, and uh, you know, I watched them intently, yeah, uh, intensely, excuse me, you know, and I watch them and I'm watching JW and, and Dylan and, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm watching their technique and I, and I could see them, they're dinking for 30, 40 balls. Um, and to me, that's cool. I love like, it too, but most people don't, but, but nobody's going to turn that on. No, you no, know, nobody's turning that on and say, Oh, wow. Look at that. It's just yeah. not going to happen. Like you turn the TV on, you want to see somebody dunk. You want to yeah. see somebody catch the football. You want to see somebody score a goal. You, yeah. you, you know, you, you've got to see some of the action, you know, the hands battles are great. I would like, I would like to have pickleball in a, in a place where you had multiple hand battles where the ball's going back more than one or two times. Mm. So, you know, bang, 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 right. bang, 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 reset, bang, 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 you know, that kind of, that kind of tempo. And I, I don't know, I don't know how to find that. I don't, you know, I guess yeah. they're experimenting and trying to find that, you know, that's where yeah. you see the most, you see the most fun and the most engagement, you know, I also, right. you know, I don't want to get into it too much. And then we could talk about it another time. Yeah. I just think, uh, I just really quickly, some of it's just boring. I think yeah, the, the way sure. they announce it, the way it's approached. And I don't think it's pickleball. Pickleball is like, you know, like you're in the backyard, you got a cooler, you're in the sideway, you're, you yeah. you know, and, and they, they're homogenizing it too much, man. They already it would be cool to have street ball. Like, you know, let's, you know, like they did with some of the three on three stuff in basketball, yeah. Yeah. you put them in the streets, you line them all up and you get pros playing, you know, like the pros would come down to Rutgers park and play, you know, whatever right. it is, but you have that sort of element where you know, Ben John shows up to this sort of street tournament and he, you know, right. it's what we did in volleyball is we just signed up and then um, they would right. sign us up with somebody else and you have this huge tournament, but it would be, it would have that atmosphere. Like you're talking about sort of back to the old throwback days where we were bringing our lawn chairs and our coolers and we're celebrating the sport. Yeah. Maybe that's what we need a little tour like you, that. 
you you've got a well i also think that they're spread out and you know they're re- yeah, it's spread out too thin there's, there's a zillion tournaments right um and the reason for that is because it's a money maker yeah. um and if they had a chance to not have amateurs who bring in a big chunk of the revenue they yeah. wouldn't but that they need them so they need yeah. the amateurs because the amateurs love it they're the amateurs yeah. are hooked so they'll play on anything you know yeah um, it doesn't matter, you know. They right. just slap some tape. Okay, great. You know, one, you know, zero, zero, two, bucks. Here, here's my three hundred for two. Yeah, for two categories, yeah. one and, two barbecue. Yeah. yeah, and then that's and that's it. And call it a day. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, it, Maybe it's, it's the ball in progress. If we can, it, yeah, if we can mush the ball be. a little, paddles could just be do what they want. But yeah, it could be. So I mean, like this Vulcan ball is crazy. I, Again, we, yeah. we've got multiple things we could talk about. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but anyway, we'll, yeah. And we'll do it because I think this has been a very fascinating conversation because you do have a lot of inside knowledge and you've been there um, you know, since the beginning for a lot of us who have just gotten to this point. Um, you, you know a lot of the, the, the history at the beginning of the tournaments and when things really started to explode. So, I, yeah, I'd love to come back and revisit some of this stuff maybe uh, in the fall Definitely. because Definitely. obviously it'll all change again. <laughs> let, yeah, let, let's, let, let's see if MLP makes it through the whole year and then we can have a talk. Right, exactly. I'm hoping it's a great format. I love it too, you know? but I, I agree. I think I do. Th- I'll say this parting, and I've said this in multiple um, podcasts. I do think the open pros players and people that are running things could learn a lot from the senior pros. I do. I 100%. think. Yeah. I think 100%. there's a, that's an untapped resource of just professional knowledge outside of even pickleball, like how to make something successful and make people want to feel wanted is like the two things that I see that senior pros are doing that right. I don't see necessarily consistently at the open level. So no, no. Yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. But you know, <sighs> people don't want to yeah. hear from the old people. That's what it they is. don't. They don't, <laughs> they don't want to hear from the old people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Hey, Julio Rivera. He's obviously he's uh, Santa Monica Pickleball Center. He's the director of pickleball. He's uh, an OG. He is. Uh, <laughs> he's doing. Yeah, he's he's surrounded by really ornate pillows and. Um, <laughs> This is just, just my a, lounge. Yeah. Yeah. Just a lot of fun. And I really appreciate you taking the time. I'm Thank finally you, glad we, we hooked up and we will, definitely. I will definitely do it again. Cause it's one of my the favorite conversations I've had on this channel. So definitely listen, when they pick up this movie, we'll see each other again. All right? <laughs> That's right. And yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe me, you and, and Ashley can go have coffee and talk. about. Definitely. It. We'll bring Sam, Doug, Wes and the, and the rest of the gang, the whole crew. All right. All right, Julio. I appreciate it, man. All right, man. Take care, man. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed our conversation with Julio. I think we will get back to this in the fall because there's a lot to talk about with paddles and balls and the pro game and the amateur game all continuing to evolve and develop. All right, folks, you know what to do at the end of the day. Uh Let's pickle.